Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Person, unless... You're Tony Fauci, in which case you're America's doctor and a hero. The whole. And that's the thing. Like I said before, my body, my choice. There are lots of people, millions as a matter of fact, that have medical exemptions and other issues with taking the VACC. You can fill in the rest so the algorithm doesn't pick it up. Maybe they've already had COVID. And getting the vaccine, their doctor says it's maybe iffy. Or their doctor says, no, you have MS. Or you have some underlying underlying condition. And there's lots of people. When you can't work, you can't go to a ball game, you can't go to a restaurant, you become a second-class citizen. You have to quit your job? This, folks, is very much starting to look like the old Jim Crow days in the South where they pick and choose what level in society you belong to. It's very, very dangerous. Now, these are baby steps towards that. It's not Jim Crow, of course, but it's got to start somewhere. And therein lies the hypocrisy. Therein lies the hypocrisy. You refuse medical care because you haven't been VACC. You can fill in the rest. You can refuse being let into a public place. It's ridiculous and it's wrong. The thing she said... Reminds her of that book she once read, maybe the only book she's read. Listen. By next summer, we could be living in our own version of The Handmaid's Tale, where forced birth is the law in large sections of the country. You know, now, anybody familiar with The Handmaid's Tale knows it's dystopian United States. Supposedly, ultra-religious right-wing nuts have taken over the country. I saw the first season it's very well acted and it is dark <laughs> there's no question it's dark but in the handmaid's tale most women or men they can't get pregnant it's very small amount of women that can carry so what they do is they pick these handmaids and the husband as the wife is holding down the handmaid he R-A-P-E-D hers, her. And it's horrible, and it's ridiculous, and it's savage, and it's wrong. But the thing of it is, though, she's comparing it to that. She's comparing it to someone who screwed up, didn't intentionally get pregnant, and guys, their responsibility. I have zero, absolutely zero problem with birth control. None. You don't want to have children? You don't want to have children. If you want to decide how many you have and when, I have absolutely zero problem with that. I will defend that all day long. But to use abortion as birth control? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And she's comparing these two The dystopian world of The Handmaid's Tale is over the top and ridiculous and hyperbolic. Senator Warren, you know, people think it's hyperbolic uh, when I tweet about The Handmaid's Tale coming to America. But I don't think it seems hyperbolic now. Does it to you? No. Now, this doesn't count. Your body, their choice. This is the ACLU, who was at one time an amazing organization. They defended the rights under the Constitution. And sometimes it was against popular belief or even some laws. But the Constitution is etched in stone. If you want to amend it, amend it. Fine, not a problem. And they'll stick up for people that want to get an abortion up until the very last moment before birth. But yet, when it comes to VACC, fill in the rest, 
being forced upon people at their jobs or to go into public places to show ID with a passport. This is their response now. Far from compromising them, V-A-C-C-I-N-E mandates actually further civil liberties. This is what's happened to the liberal left that we didn't, we didn't agree with, people like myself, but at least we understood where they came from and they had the best intentions of the country at heart and they believed in the Constitution. This is nuts and it's wrong and they're an institution that used to be a standard. Now, here's the other thing. This gentleman coming up called the Texas law. This is the American Taliban. And it's just, it's so, it's so off the hook that I can't even believe it. Wayne, they just want you to know that if you're for this ban. And we have a situation in Texas right now tonight where the American Taliban, because that's what it is, there's not an American evangelical right wing movement. There is an American Taliban. Taliban is weirdly similar in so many ways to the Middle Eastern Islamist terrorist. Now, we're similar in so many ways to Middle Eastern terrorists, people that would support the Texas law. Now, I'm not pushing my beliefs on abortion on anyone. I just want them to see how back crap crazy they are, the people that def- they're, you're defending these people that go along with this. My body, my choice. Look who you're defending. And we're going to see some more video here uh, concerning the background of Planned Parenthood. Just a brief. And it's amazing to me. I don't think they really realize who they're defending. Birthing people now? It, it's unbelievable. Here's a trans father gives birth as a man. And this is what they're defending. This, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing what to me. It? And I'm going to show you again the exchange with Jen Psaki, even though I have her face blocked. With the gentleman, I'm assuming he's from a religious uh, organization, newspaper, magazine. And she, you know, President we're going to watch this again. His own Catholic faith teaches abortion is morally wrong. No. He believes that it's a woman's right, it's a woman's body, and it's her choice. Now, I'm going to go back to the theme. The abortion argument or defense of is the same argument defense that the slaveholders used. It's legal. It's constitutional. It's my property. It's my body. It's my right. Those of you out there think long and hard about who you're defending and who you fight for. Who does he believe then should look out for the unborn child? He believes that it's up to a woman to make those decisions uh, and up to a woman to make those decisions with her doctor. I know you've never faced those choices, nor have you ever been pregnant, but for women out there who have... Now, you've never faced those decisions and choices. I go over this again because it's important. Knowing something is wrong, whether you've ever been involved in that situation or not, it's still wrong. It's still wrong. Absolutely. And the abolitionist of the 1800s knew that. You didn't have to own a slave to know that slavery was, e- was evil. Face those choices. This is an incredibly difficult thing. Now I'm going to show you a small montage here of just some, just some photos, just some illustrations. And I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. And I want you to watch this. And pause and think about what it says and think about what you believe in and who you defend and who you vote for. I'm not saying never vote for Democrats and always vote for Republicans. That would be stupid. A lot of Republicans suck too. But what I want you to think about is what these people are defending. What are they truly, truly, truly defending? And do not vote for anyone of any party that believes in this nonsense and defends it and defends it vigorously and with hate and venom. And I'm just going to show a few illustrations here. And if you love, I would love to have you stop at each one and just think about what it says.
Now here, when the abortion was made constitutional in 1973 by the Supreme Court, over time, the pro-abortion people have gotten, they're in a tough spot because they know that's a human being that's in the mother. They know this. And it's just so inherent instinctually for people to just be in horror at the fact that you're going to kill another human being, especially a defenseless child. So over time, they've had to make it so that the unborn child is not a person. It's the only way that the society or any society can justify any of it because they would just shriek in horror if they thought that it was a person. So they have to dehumanize. Does this sound familiar? Now, this is one I want you to think about long and hard. You know, 50, 100 years from now, most of us will be dead. And we look back now, we're taking down statues of slaveholders that fought in the Civil War and other things that, just slaveholders in general. And all of a sudden now, them and all their descendants are evil. And they represent evil, even though some did some amazing things. The founders, many of them were slaveholders, and they put together one of the greatest constitutions and republics that ever lived. Think about what people are going to think of you and the generation that's alive now from 1973 to date. Allowing this to go on for so long, think of what future generations will say about us. And that was said back then. And now what's happening? What are people going to say about us now in the future? Now this is one here. Stop the video because there's a lot of text. It's a little hyperbolic against Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to lie. But I think it proves a point that maybe, just maybe, I'm not saying all Democrats are evil. That's not the point of this. It's the Democrats or anyone, for that matter, of any party that inherently believes that this is a constitutional right. Now, I brought, put this picture up for one simple reason. The high, very high percent, I believe, over 50% of all abortions in the United States are people that are non-white. And this is just cheered by the left, by the progressives. And the funny part is they seem to have no problem with it. Hundreds of thousands of non-white children are aborted every year in the United States. Hundreds of thousands. And they say zero. And they say zero about the hundreds and hundreds and thousands that are shot in in big cities, black-on-black crime. Young black men dying by the thousands, they say nothing. But if, and it happens sometimes, an unarmed black man is killed by the police, the whole country has to burn. This, folks, is hypocrisy on a scale that's even hard to imagine. 